Hello, this is Dean Seddon, and I am going to uh, give you a short 30-minute training session on how to get consistent sales using LinkedIn. So this whole 30-minute uh, session is going to equip you with the tools to get two or three new customers each and every month from LinkedIn. So let's get started, and I'll talk to you through who is this training for. So... Um, I've thought long and hard about this particular session and who it's for. I do uh, more in-depth de training and more specific training for particular roles. But this training is really for, for business owners, for small business owners who want to generate leads and clients online, perhaps a small company or perhaps a, a one-man solopreneur, one-person solopreneur business. Um and perhaps they're, they're selling their own time, whether it's they're a consultant, a coach, or something like that, and they don't want to do pushy sales tactics. But they do want consistent and repeatable results. Uh, so uh, you might think about sales as a necessary evil. This little short uh, training session is for you. So, uh, yes, if you're a salesperson, you may get some value from this. Yes, if you're a marketer, you'll get some value from this. But this is the the, uh, the target I'm uh, aiming this session at. So feel free to watch along if that's not you. But this is really for the business owners, as I've mentioned. So what are we going to cover in this session? So uh, there's some things that I've learned along the way I want to share with you from how I got into LinkedIn. I want to share with you some of the results uh, that it's delivered for me and, and how I've got there. Um, talk about the lead generation problem uh, and some of the problems with lead generation so you can spot those issues. Uh, the three key things you need to know if you want to uh, get consistent sales from LinkedIn and the three key things you need to do if you want to get consistent results on LinkedIn. At the end of the session, if you've got some value, I would just ask you to take a look at the Elite program that I'm going to share a little bit of information about, which takes you into a more in-depth uh, strategy and tactics and tutorials, um, which I'll share towards the end. So bear with me as we go through this, and I'd appreciate if you'd hang around for the two, three minutes while I tell you about the Elite program. So why listen to me? First of all, I'm asking for 30 minutes of your time. Why listen to me? I thought I'd do put this in just so that you can see that I am not here to blow uh, hot air up your ass or whatever the saying is. I'm not here to BS you. I, I'm, I'm just going to tell you straight. So I started from nothing with LinkedIn. No big budget, no media team, no none of that stuff. I, even to this day, I write my own posts. I publish my own posts. I think up the ideas for my own posts. Uh, so uh, I, I'm not talking theory here. I'm talking in practice. As a result of what I've done on LinkedIn, I have traveled and trained thousands of people about my results and how to get the results that I've had. Uh, and I'm not, again, I'm not bullshitting there either. I've tried and tested most of the strategies out there. I mean, literally, if there's a strategy out there for LinkedIn, I've probably tried it. Um, I'm a classic Northern Brit, um, so I don't mince my words. I, you take me as you find me, and I don't believe in pie in the sky. It's steak on a plate. So everything that I'm showing you here is something you can do tomorrow. So it's really practical and really just get on and do it. And I've got a track record of results. Um, whether you look on Trustpilot, whether you look on my LinkedIn profile, you'll see testimonials from people that you can dig into uh, you can go through the results you can check that these people exist and you can see that everything I'm saying other people have got results from so uh, that's just really to give you a validation that I'm not going to waste your time and I'm not going to bullshit you into something that doesn't work so the lead generation problem, and this is really important to get your head around this because this is why so many people are failing at lead generation. So number one, lead generation is hard work. It, it is hard work. Um, it's not impossible work. It's not a, ma a mountain that has to be climbed. It's just a lot of work. But the great thing about lead generation is the more you do it, the easier it gets. 
because you start to learn what works and what doesn't and you can hone your strategy. When you outsource lead generation, it's, it, the, the effort doesn't change. You still pay the same money, but you never learn any of the efficiencies yourself. So uh, if you have to outsource, hire a freelancer or whatever, but what I'm going to show you here, you can do yourself. And the more you do it yourself, the easier it will become for you. Uh, the first month or two will be about discipline. Uh, you will see results in month one, but uh, it gets easier as it becomes part of your routine. Lead generation problem number two. There's always somebody who will want to sell you their $37 ebook or secret system that when you get it, you will realize all they're doing is telling you stuff you already knew. So there is no secret system. There are two, uh, there are generally two ways to do lead generation. You hire somebody who has the knowledge or you learn how to do it. Um, people are selling kind of, I know a website for an example where you can buy these secret systems as templates and you just copy and paste it and sell it. And a lot of people are doing it without any knowledge about what's going on. So, you know, don't don't buy secret systems. Uh, people lose their heads and resort to connect and pitch on LinkedIn. So what they do is they go, I'm forgetting all the things that I know are common sense things to do. And then I'm going to connect to people. And when they accept me, I'm just going to send them a long winded sales pitch. That doesn't work. Everybody knows it doesn't work. But for some reason, people forget themselves and do it. Um, so if you've been doing that, stop because it's not going to help you. In, in fact, it, it's probably damaging your reputation on LinkedIn and it's probably damaging the health of your LinkedIn account, which if you keep doing it will probably get you restricted or have some kind of permanent ban. Uh, and if you don't believe me, I know somebody who had that happen to them. In fact, I know about four or five people who that's happened to. So most lead generation has no targeting or strategy. Uh, what it is, is it's knee jerk from, oh, crap, I need to get clients this month. Uh, I'll just go nuts. Uh, there's no strategy, no targeting. It's just hit people up, go for it, hope for the best with no real long term plan. And whilst we're on that point, a lot of people are pursuing instant results on lead gen at the cost of the long term. Now, I know and I've been there and, and you need revenue and clients on a monthly basis not in six months you want them now what i'm saying to you is that there's a way to have your cake and eat it, eat it with linkedin if you run a system it doesn't feel good because it can feel very rewarding to say you've sent a hundred connect and pitch messages yeah it can feel very rewarding whereas this is about creating a, a, a pipeline that develops itself so this this training session will show you instant results i.e. in the first month, and it won't jeopardize the long-term results. So you can rinse and repeat this as many times as you want. So how I got into LinkedIn. So let me just tell you, I joined LinkedIn 10 years ago, like everybody else, and did absolutely nothing with it. I put a load of stuff on it, logged out, logged in every couple of months, did nothing. Uh, but fast forward five, just over five years ago, I started an agency. And we were uh, trying to get clients for our business, and um, LinkedIn was one of the ways we thought was a, a cheap and easy way to get in front of the right people, which it is. So we started using LinkedIn to avoid cold calling. Went absolutely well. Uh, we went from zero to about 700,000 turnover in just under three years. So it really, really quickly. Uh, I was the marketer. So I'm the marketing person. And my business partner was the salesperson. So he very, very talented salesperson, um, you know, incredible salesperson, actually, to be fair to him. Uh, but we had this fallout, as all business partnerships do, long, complicated, messy business uh, that we don't need to go into today. But then we ended up in a scenario where the salesperson, my business partner, had gone and done his thing. And now the marketer's here who doesn't want to do sales like the salesperson did. I don't want to be... Uh, traveling to meetings and doing all that kind of stuff. I feel good when I'm sat in my office and, and seeing what's going on with the business. 
So I had to develop a strategy that worked around me and I had to do it pretty damn quick because I'm not the salesperson and I now have to build the business. So we we were doing for a, when the kind of divorce happened, we ended up with about two grand a month of, of revenue. And I was like, we've got to kind of pick this up really quickly. So we did it uh, predominantly through LinkedIn. And we went from two grand a month to 70 grand a month in sales uh, in just under 18 months. So really, really quickly we went we went up uh, and, you know, we've held that number. So that's how I got into LinkedIn. I got, I had to build a strategy that worked for me because I'm not the cold cold calling high energy salesperson that my business partner was and is or former business partner is. So this is my journey. And this is why this training is geared more towards business owners who are not in that kind of aggressive sales uh, mindset or they're not that kind of person. And there's nothing wrong with that kind of person, by the way. It's just a different skill set. So my results. So um, my marketing business went from 2K to 70K a month, as I said. I got invited to speak in loads of different places because I started talking about the things that I did and the things that my business did and some of the results we were achieving. Last year, I went to seven different countries teaching my strategies, uh, not just LinkedIn, to be fair, but other platforms and other, other strategies as well. I repeat my LinkedIn strategy and the work keeps coming in. So I, I, it, to date, in the last two and a half years since I adjusted the strategy, I've not seen any drop off. It's performed uh, steadily. Uh, and a lot of this strategy you could adjust for other platforms as well. So I no longer need that salesperson. I don't need somebody to do that for me. Uh, I can do this myself without ever picking up the phone. So or ever going to a meeting, all of my business is pretty much done from my desk. Um, yes, I've got a team and yes, we have to talk to clients and all that kind of stuff, but it's pretty much done from my desk because I, I designed my strategy to work that way. So the three key things you need to know. So the, this is where you need your pen and paper. I will put a download of this presentation on the course as well. So you can download it for yourselves. Uh, just to kind of give you some mental notes. So here's the three key, key things you need to know. So before you even try LinkedIn, you have to define who your target customer is. Now, you cannot go on there and say business owners. You cannot go on there and say um, marketing managers. You need to be far more specific than that. Because when you go on LinkedIn, you get the ability to hit thousands and thousands of people in one go. And if you have a wishy-washy message, it won't hit anybody. It won't resonate with anybody. So you might have to create some ultra-targeted client personas, uh, which may include things like job title, uh, geography, industry, the company size. So uh, let's say, for an example, you have a piece of software that helps people track time uh, and uh, so they can bill more time, for an example. You might have to target particular industries at a time. So you might target accountants first. You might target lawyers first. You might target marketing agencies first. But if you tried to target them all, you wouldn't be able to have a highly targeted message and what you want to do is punch through with your message and show people you are for them. So you might have to pick very targeted people, groups to, to start with. And you can change them as you go, but start with one. Don't start with all business owners or all this. Be specific so that you can get the penetration into the marketplace with one specific group. So coaches, for an example, or accountants. Uh, try and drill down into particular groups. What's the problem you solve? So this is really important. Um, if you don't, uh, if you can't articulate and understand the problem that you solve for clients or customers, you will struggle to ha to get them interested in what you've got to offer. Now, all problems usually boil down to, in the simplest form, time and money. Um, so time and money, your your product or service or solution 
will either s save or give people more time, save time or give them more time, uh, save them money or help them get more money, so make, make them more money or save them money. Uh, and those two things are what your product, service or solution ultimately involves. Now, let me give you, uh, you also need to understand the pain and the dream. So the pain is how is the customer feeling? What are they expressing? Uh, and then the dream is what do they want to happen? What do they want to happen? So your solution in most cases won't address the pain and the dream directly. Let me give you an example. Um, if I wanted, um, if I have toothache uh, and I've got excruciating toothache, my pain is I'm in physical pain. It's hurting. So my reaction is I want that pain to go away. So then I will look for a solution to get rid of that pain. Now, of course, there's the dentist. But if the dentist close, I could look for particular pain relief. I could look for uh, maybe some um, other things that could happen, uh, clove oil and things like that. So when a customer's in pain, they look for a, a relief. They look for pain relief of which your product, service or solution can provide the pain relief which then allows the customer to, to, to reach their dream. And their dream is, I have no pain. I can eat whatever food I like now, and I'm all okay, and my teeth are great. So the pain, the, it, it's not good enough for you to just say, we can solve this. You have to not understand and be the expert in your customer's pain and be able to communicate how your product, service, or solution can help them achieve the dream. Hopefully that makes sense. So why are you different? Why are you different? Lots of people, when I speak to people, and I, sometimes people will book time with me and I'll spend a day in their business looking through what they're doing and how they're communicating to see where the, the issues are in, in being more competitive in the marketplace, how they can generate more sales, how they can convert more sales, and often it comes down to um, really generic differentiation. So uh, I ask people, what makes you different? Why are you different than everybody else? Because we're good people. Because we've got integrity. Because we're honest. We're a family business. We uh, put extra care in our stuff. Um, these are the most wishy-washy differentiators you can possibly imagine. But also, nobody uh, would believe them because everybody says it. So you have to find some ways that show that you are different. So how do you, so what style do you operate? Do you operate in a different way? Um, what's your methods of communication? How relational are you? Can you s change the way you work in the, in the, in the, the kind of style that you deliver it? Um, and we've seen this a lot with a lot of young and more uh, proactive, aggressive companies They'll uh, and more relational selling. What from your style, both image, visual and relational, can, can say it makes you different? Um, what experiences make you different? Not just we've got 50 years experience or we've got 20 years experience. I actually once saw a LinkedIn expert saying they had 60 years of experience in LinkedIn, which was fascinating because he must have been more experienced than the people at LinkedIn because it's not been around for 60 years. But not just the physical experience, but what experience can you offer to your customers? What's the, how does it feel to work with you? How, how, what, what things have happened in your business that have helped other people that are you, that have taught you things to do things differently? So how do you do it different to Joe Bloggs? Well, we had this experience in 2008 that taught us this, and this is why we do it this way. This is why our style's a little different. This is why uh, our results and method, which I'll come to, are a little different. Results. Um, often businesses talk about case studies, which are long, 
long reads or they're very factual. What stories and examples have you got of real results that you can just share as bite-sized nuggets? These matter both from your content, but also from talking points. When you're talking to somebody, maybe somebody schedules a call, wants to chat with you through LinkedIn, and they say, so how can you do this? Well, we've done it for this person, this person, this person, this person. You need to know the results you've delivered so that you can refer to them use them in content and explain to people why you're different, why you get the results that other people don't. Uh, and then finally, and this is particularly important for, say, uh, coaches and consultants, but lots of businesses can gain from this, is what's your method? What's your model? How do you do what you do and structure it into a repeatable process? Often I meet with people and they say, well, I'm a copywriter and I'm a web developer. How do I stand out from other web developers and other copywriters? Well, your style, your experience, your results, but also your method, because your method allows you to have something totally unique. It can be a, a you know, an ABCD method in the classic sense of a physical method, or it can just be the way you work with people is ingrained into a different process that makes it easier to get results and gives people a better experience and also matches the style of business you want to build. So these matter because there will also, these three things you need to know will be useful for you when you're writing your content to hook your target customers. So the three things that you need to do. You ready? Here we go. Number one, you need to write your profile for your target client. So that means communicating what is their challenge as part of your profile. What is the outcome you can deliver for them? What, what are your methods? What is your method? Your profile is all about the visitor. And there are two key sections that are really important in communicating this. The first one is your headline. This is a piece of content here that everybody, every post, every message, every connection request, every everything you do, this, this headline follows you, follows you. Instead of just having your job title there, why not put some of the key information that about your target audience, their challenge and the outcome you can deliver for them so that when you send a connection, when they see your post, when you they see your comments, they will know exactly what you're about. And if if you, you talk about their problem in your headline, they're going to be curious and they'll come have a look at and see who you are. So these are three, th three. Uh, well, this one's the first of the three key things you need to do. And don't forget the about section. A lot of people put the in the about section a lot of what I call CV crap. I'm a results driven, proven track record, blah, 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 blah. Put something in there, and bear in mind most people can only see the first two or three lines, that really is a compelling reason for your ideal target client to have a conversation with you, to accept your connection request. Make it so compelling that they go, you can solve that problem, or you're saying you can solve that problem that I have. So make it clear, this is who you solve it for, this is, this is who you work with, this is the challenge and this is how you, this is the solution or you can solve the solution. And again, results, stories and things like that from the previous slide will really help. Next one, you need to produce content daily for your target audience. And this is an example of a post I did, which is a PDF post. Uh, and it's really important that you produce posts regularly. Be consistent with the timing of the post. So if you're going to post at 10 in the morning every day, post at 10 in the morning every day. Don't chop and change and move around because think of it like a scientific experiment. If you're posting on LinkedIn, you want to learn how to get better at posting on LinkedIn. If you start being erratic with the timings, you'll never learn and you'll never learn what your audience resonates with. And so, and also, if you could chop and, chop and change your timing, you may miss some people who see your offer, see your promo, 
or see some interesting content. Uh, so stick to us time. Uh, don't be, you don't need to be rigid and it's, you know, t uh, 9, 59 and 13 seconds. But within, within an hour or so of each day, post at a consistent time. For every sales pitch, produce a how-to, an inspirational, funny or personal post. So mix your sales pitches in with other content. Now, people ask me what's a good ratio and I have two ratios. Uh, if you're starting out, I would do a four to one. So four non-sales posts to one sales post. But as you get going, after a couple of months, you could actually change that to a three to two. So three non-sales posts, two sales posts. Now, it doesn't mean that your non-sales posts don't reference your business, don't talk to your ideal customer, don't Re, uh, aren't around themes around their problem, whether it be time, money, efficiency, productivity. They can all be around those themes, but you're not making an outright offer. So a four to one at the outset and a three to two uh, a couple of months down the line. Reply to comments. Every comment you get, even if it's from your mum, reply because it amplifies the post. So reply to comments. If you really want to be smart, reply to comments with questions so it gets them commenting again. It will amplify the post. And of course, one post a day. Don't get tempted to do multiple posts. It will mess things up. So a couple of tips on the posts. So obviously it's geared around the pain points and the themes of the problems that your customers have. Keep sentences short. Um, make it as easy to scan read as possible. And the first two or three lines need to be your teasers for your posts uh, because that's the first thing people see. So make sure it's interesting for your target audience in that first two or three lines. So you can see how I've done it on screen here. Use videos, images, PDFs. Don't become a one trip pony. If you do videos all the time, you'll see a decline. Mix it up with images, PDFs, even text on its own sometimes will work. Use three hashtags. So pick three hashtags, put them on your posts, mix them up. Don't have to be the same ones every time. But the one important thing is you should be using the hashtags that your customers are likely to follow. The hashtags that your customers or target audience are likely to follow. So connection requests. So real, real, real simple one. I've had to kind of remove the names out of this one just to avoid uh, giving everybody's privacy away. But uh, send connection requests. It's a good thing to send connection requests. But if you're getting started, send 10 to 15 connection requests to your target clients a week. Just 10 to 15. Connect with people who like or comment on your content. So if somebody comments on your post, uh, give them a like, reply to their comment, then go to and connect with them and say, hey, thanks for liking and commenting on my post. Would you like to connect? Really simple, low key. They are good to have in your network because they will engage with your content and they will help you build your audience. You don't necessarily have to just connect with the people who can do business with. There are other people who it's good to build relationships with because you never know where, who they're connected to and who they might advocate you to or that because of their like and comment, who might see you. So do engage with people and grow, grow your network with the people who engage with your content. Don't pitch people in messages, but just be social. If you want to send a message, a happy birthday, congratulations, fine. If you, if you want to uh, share some pieces of content or a blog article, that's fine. But don't use the messages to pitch. Uh, it's You have to be really smart with pitching in messages uh, and uh, in my full LinkedIn Elite program, we teach you how to do that in a way that converts. Um, but for this training, don't pitch in messages. It, it's an art to pitch in messages and make it work. Um, if you really want to do that, sign up for the Elite program. Only connect to second degree. Third degrees have nothing in common. So if you connect, if they reject your connection request, there is a risk that they will put you into LinkedIn jail. Uh, LinkedIn jail is dangerous for your account because if you get there too many times, they will put permanent limits on your account, which include not being able to send connection requests to people. So don't connect to thirds 
Build your relationship with seconds so you can get to the thirds. Withdraw your connection requests from anyone who doesn't accept within seven days. And to do that, you go to my network, click this see all or manage all here, go to the sent tab and just click withdraw. But you should do that because if you get too many rejected connection requests, again, you can end up in jail. And golden rule, never send more than 100 connection requests in one go. That is a surefire way to get yourself in LinkedIn jail. So do not do it. Uh, and a great tip here, engage with your target audience before you before and after connecting. Don't just connect with them and forget. Engage before and after. If they're posting, like it, comment on it. it uh, make sure you do it on a regular basis. So these are really key things that you need to do. So finally, I've got uh, one more thing to show you. Uh, have you enjoyed this session? I've done it really quick for you. Bite-sized information to get you go going. I want to share with you for two minutes, and I mean two minutes, uh, our LinkedIn Elite program. So it's a one-off. Uh, uh, you pay for one-off, but you get access, instant access uh, for life or until the world ends. Um, so what do you get in the LinkedIn Elite program? How to use our 30-day sales roadmap to convert more connections and clients. Full roadmaps, uh, literally step-by-step -step how to go from I don't know this person to I'm having a conversation with this person to uh, we've set up a coaching call, a strategy call, a demo, a meeting, whatever you want. Uh, a clever way to increase your connection acceptance rate to 90%. How to get your target clients to know who you are before you ever connect. So how to build relationships deliberately in advance of when you want to convert people. How to get thousands of views on your LinkedIn content. Uh, and in some cases, we've got millions, but most people get thousands or tens of thousands on their content every day. How you can use third party content to get traffic to your website using LinkedIn. How to write articles which get views and sales. So all of that's in the Elite program, including all the tutorials. There's like five hours of training and tutorials. You can watch them all in one go. You can pick up different modules. It's all there for you to go. But we're also throwing in a one-to-one -one strategy call, video call, so that we can help you implement and tailor the training to your specific business. So it's a one-to-one, -one, it's 60 minutes, and we literally go through everything. What I would say, though, is if you want to get the benefit, really important, do some of the training first so you don't waste the time on the strategy call with things that you'd already know if you did some of the training. So if you want this, uh, there's a promo on at the moment. It's at the bottom. If you click the link, you can sign up, get on there, Lifetime access, book your call. I mean, literally, you could book your call tomorrow if you wanted to, any business day, and it's away. So if you really want to take it up to the next level, um, just so that you're wondering about what the results difference are, is if you implement the training I've just given you, you'll get two to three uh, uh, clients a month if you're consistent. With the Elite program, you'll get 10 to 15. It's really built for scale. Um, so the conversions are higher, the, the work's a bit higher, um, but there's a, it's a full strategic program with step-by-steps that will help you lift the results. Uh, what I would say, though, is if, you, if you're if you not going to be consistent, both of these trainings are a waste of time. Uh, and I'm just being straight with you. You have to implement if you want results. So uh, no spin. This is my deal. If you want to join the Elite program, click the link. It should be either on the bottom or on the screen. And you can get on to our LinkedIn Elite program, schedule a one-to-one, -one, and get all the tutorials, all the strategies, all laid out that you can work through and implement. And we can help you through your strategy call to implement. So thank you so much for watching this little training video. Please do implement. Come find me on LinkedIn. I'd love to hear how you're getting on. Uh, and... Uh, I really genuinely wish you every success on LinkedIn because I know anybody can do this and you can do this. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you on LinkedIn.